Gotta get more followers. Welcome to Wednesday, September the 7th. Man, this month's going fast. It's currently 10.34 a.m. You see that denoted right here on the live clock. And it's nice to see you. That's right. Maybe we'll trade uh, Maybe trade some of those treasuries the kids are talking about. Talk of the town. This is a no micro zone. Guys, before we get to some trading, let's take a quick gander at a few things. Uh, I was going to do a separate video and I decided it kind of wasn't worth it. Uh, Apex sale ends tomorrow on the 8th at the end of the day, central time. 80% off first month. I know this is a bit squished. I need to condense it to fit it in the recording area. 80% off first month, 50% off future months, up to 10 accounts. Uh, so this was like their Labor Day week sale. I was thinking about this. They, so they only typically run the 80% off on major holidays. The next major holiday isn't until Thanksgiving. I mean, yeah, you have Halloween, but I wouldn't, cause that's not a holiday that like involves people being off work, unfortunately, uh, for any of you people that have uh, real jobs. So... Uh, nonetheless, uh, next big holiday is Thanksgiving uh, in the U.S. That's like two and a half months away. So uh, not sure when the next big 80% off will be. Of course, uh, your friend here, CFT, will try to try to work in a little something in between. I was thinking about this. My one-year anniversary with uh, Apex is coming up mid-October. That's when I first passed uh, the first 300K, and I've had it ever since. Got my first payout end of November and uh, every month thereafter. So... Uh, maybe we can work something then, but no promises. I was just thinking about that this morning. Guys, back to this. 80% off. It ends tomorrow at midnight. The other sale is Jigsaw Trading, who makes Jigsaw Day Trader, which we're going to get to enjoy for the rest of this video for the most part. They are running a sale, and they don't run sales very often. Um, if you want, there's Apex, but you guys know how to get there. Uh, link down below. So Jigsaw, they even have it up here. So they have up to $350 off. They always say the first 100 customers, whether it's a marketing gimmick or not, I don't know. Uh, but that ends September the 9th. Now, 350 off is, let's see if this works. Their links were kind of goofed up the other day. Is off like their most expensive package. And I really don't think you guys need it, like to be honest. So all the different versions of day trader software I use, independent, professional, and institutional, it's the exact same software. All that's included with the higher levels is uh, more education. So I have the basic, the independent level. I paid $579. You can use a code and get $100 off of that level if you want. Certainly, if you want the bigger ones, um, there's codes for those. I didn't put them on my website because I think most people just get the independent. Um, you could go to their site and read. They have discounts on other stuff like Journalytics and all that as well. Um, but if you're just, ah, geez, they have a million pop-ups. That's one thing they definitely have a lot of. Um, let's see if I can find, they have a lot of stuff on their site and I will admit it's, uh, not always the best laid out. Um, here we go. Here we go. We found it independent. So this, so you'll see here, day trader platform. I mean, that. It's across the board. You get it at any of the price levels. What you get with the extra ones is institutional training, uh, complimentary group session. Um, although I think they, honestly, I think they post these on YouTube like after the fact. So guys, whatever you want to get. But if you just want the basic, you can get a hundred bucks off. We've spent a lot of time talking about Jigsaw. Let's see Jigsaw in action. I do want to warn people because I sometimes see people and it kind of concerns me. They run out and buy Jigsaw because... They see me use Jigsaw, and they maybe see me having some success in the futures and treasuries, and they think, well, that's it. CFT uses it. That's like the that's the magic uh, formula to success, and it's not. And I will tell you, it's not intuitive at first. It's, uh, you know, it's there's definitely a, a big learning curve with Jigsaw. Once you learn it, I think it's really powerful. Um, I will say, too, actually, I wanted to do this in this video. I think Jigsaw is great for trading like the treasuries and maybe even some other products like ES, uh, crude oil, and then the agriculture, slower moving products. I know ES and crude aren't like the slowest of slow, but something like NQ, which I know a lot of people trade, I would not even attempt this. And I'm actually, that's what I wanted to do. Let me, so before we even get to any trading stuff, I'm going to show you an NQ depth of market. Let's, I haven't looked at one of these in a long time. So here is a, this is un, 
filtered if you want like I don't have all my greens and purples let me just move it over here um, like imagine trying to use this actually let me do a few more things here it's off the screen I'm gonna change the font size just so we can see more of it um, let's make it kind of small there we go so now you can see more of it um, I can change the colors and all that, but to get the point. So, you know, what I'm doing with the treasuries over here on the right, like observing the order flow, watching the buys, the sales, the pulling orders, you're not going to be able to track that with NQ. So the point is, if you want to use Jigsaw for something like NQ, like I think you're a waste your money, because at least to trade, do what I'm kind of doing. If you just want a really cool depth of market, certainly. I mean, uh, Jigsaw, Jigsaw's it, and customize it, all of that stuff. But, uh, for making trading decisions like i wouldn't even know what to do with this um it does have i know i'm putting on a jigsaw little clinic here i haven't looked at a lot of this stuff in a long time there is a way to bring up like a heat map chart let me um kind of trying to squeeze everything into my uh screen here let me just cover this um so it's painting as it's going so it's not filled in yet but uh it shows different lines like the more white a line is the more orders are sitting at that level but even still i don't know that this tells you anything and this is like capturing every single trade i want to say it's not like time based it's more trade based so um again you probably never see me use this because i don't use it um i don't use this type of stuff so uh but hey if you wanted to see like there like a huge whack like how would you even know that was coming from this i mean so there you go i know it's don't want to be disparaging the jigsaw and i've looked at this for far too long gonna get back to what's comforting here the treasuries but uh there you go there's a little little show so yes jigsaw's on sale for 100 bucks until the 9th which is friday but they say only the first 100 people i mean i don't know if that's true or not so uh the sale is currently still on what else is going on nothing actually there's treasuries moving kind of slow here i mean yeah they're up at the high and stuff I've been thinking about, uh, I always come up with some ideas, doing some type of like challenge. You know, I thought of this in the past, um, just to make it more exciting, you know, like, uh, you know, challenge, like I thought about hundred ticks, like, uh, you know, how long will it take me to make a hundred ticks? And I'm not trying to make it in a day. I'm like, seriously, like if I just trade regularly every day, like how long to a hundred ticks, uh, something like that, or have a, an actual dollar goal, uh, challenge you know how long to make X amount and do something cool with that money buy everybody blue Porsches and green Jeeps I'm kidding of course I'm not gonna do that I'm not that generous but uh, alright guys I am not seeing much for trading unfortunately I was picked like the worst times to like record a video apparently all right back to these treasuries i'm um, yeah the speed is not here today so unfortunately it's a horrible time uh to record but maybe not we might be able to do some uh some scalps i'm gonna set it up like last time somebody commented not on my last video but one of my other videos where i was doing uh scalping they said it wasn't very clear what i was looking for uh when doing the short like a one tick two tick scalp uh, I can tell you as much as I can, but some of it, you just kind of have to get in there and test things out and figure out for yourselves. That was kind of the trajectory I took. I took all the learning from the internets, the YouTubes, the John Grady's, the Peter Davies, and, uh, got in there and started testing things myself and, uh, fine tuning. You kind of learn over experience. The way I have my depth market set up. Let's actually look at, you know what? Let's do this today. I'm going to, I don't want to confuse people. Not that you necessarily would be. I was going to move these around, but let's, the far left is the 10 years. Let's talk 10 years. I want to show you on the 10 years because it's slower moving and we can, you know, point things out maybe a bit better uh, for scalping. So for one, the ultra bond and the 30 years trade at $31.25 a tick. 10 years is going to be half of that, $15 and change. Just call it 15 bucks after commissions. So uh, 15 bucks a tick, uh, but you can throw around, throw around a lot more size. Uh, if you care to, you certainly don't have to. 
Uh, so what am I looking for doing like a little scalp? Let's say a one tick scalp. Um, so first things first, I mentioned it before, but you know, the gray column is obviously the price. Uh, the inside green, the inside purple is the actual uh, limit order sitting on the book. Uh, so this is what you would see on a traditional depth of market. Uh, price, inside green, inside purple. And that's all you'd see. So you wouldn't see any of the other stuff. Uh, I mean, yes, you can use it to trade. I, I don't think, I don't know. For the way I trade, it wouldn't be enough information. Um, what I really like are almost the two other columns. The outside column shows you the orders being pulled and added to this price. So when you see a lot of people pulling right here, you're seeing big negatives. On the flip side over here, you're seeing big positives. That means they're piling on orders. These guys are pulling orders. Just supply and demand, probably going to push it down a tick. Probably. Doesn't mean they will. Somebody could come in and switch this right up. But if I was a betting man, I would say this is probably coming down. The other thing to consider is the inside columns. These are actual traded columns. So remember, these are just limit orders. People can pull them and add them all they want. These are actual trades. So when you start seeing a lot of activity on the actual trading, also a good sign. So say this right now is about 1,013. I mean, it's changing, obviously. If I all of a sudden saw like 500 trade, 300 trade, and this was starting to thin out, good chance this is going to pop down. So you have to be quick. You got to be on the game. Um, I would recommend if that's something you like, you're like, okay, I still don't know, like, what's what or whatever just watch it like literally just sit here like we are right now watch it and kind of like observe and just pick don't like watch everything and just pick even just pick one side like we're kind of doing now pick the buyers say okay i'm gonna watch the buyers let's watch what happens let's watch this dynamic kind of glance up at the sellers see what's happening you know they're pulling orders nothing's really trading right now you can see that right here like these numbers are changing nobody's transacting nothing is happening so it's a good opportunity, if anything, to watch this stuff and uh, and see what's transpired. So right now, like this very second, I would say no like specific direction. Like I wouldn't be entering a trade right now. It's pretty evenly matched, right? You got like 13, and you can look too at prices below. That's one thing it's worthwhile looking at. I wouldn't say it's the most important part of this. Like, but if like if this was 1,700 and there was 20,000 sitting here. That I might factor in, but I mean, you seldom will see that. So um, I would very much be focused on the current price, the buyers and the sellers. I also wouldn't get too hung up. Something I'm, I see a lot of and it annoys me um, is people like to talk a lot about stuff or throw around terms they heard and then act like, they're a pro at spotting them. I'm going to throw out one in specific is iceberg orders. I see one per, I'm not even going to name names, but one person, they, they will just sit around all day and call out, uh, Oh, there's an iceberg order at uh, two nine five. Watch out. Like, but they don't have any input on what to do about it or why they even think that's there or anything like that. Like I legitimately think they just like acting like they know what they're talking about and they have no idea. Um, I wouldn't get hung up on all that stuff. Uh, other thing is I hear people, oh, shorts are trapped, longs are trapped. Uh, there's consolidation here. I don't care about any of that stuff. Like, that's just stupid nonsense if you ask me. It's a lot of people wanting to, like, throw around terms and, like, play, like, commentator on the market, but then not actually make any decisions based on that stuff. So, I know lately I've been going hard at uh, making, taking little cheap shots at... Uh, different ways people trade. And I do like, I showed you the NQ Dom, like I wouldn't be trading NQ using depth of market. So if you want to trade NQ, by all means go use the chart. Uh, but for trading the treasury specific, um, I think there's a lot of value in using the depth of market. And I mean, I really do. I said it before and I'm pretty proud of this analogy, but I really feel like this is like zooming in with a microscope to see the actual like street level trade by trade transactions that are happening and that's where the knowledge is in this stuff if you were looking at this on a chart it's just going to be a chart that's basically flatline and up a tick down tick up like what are you going to do with that but if you're looking at here you might be like oh sellers you know a little bit you know they're pushing these guys down but they're fighting back you can get a bit more of the story so when i kind of bag on charts and stuff i mean 
take it with a grain of salt and keep in mind I'm, I'm kind of doing it relative to the treasuries. So I still haven't seen it. I mean, we've been watching this now for several minutes. I mean, it's literally traded, I think, between these two prices, maybe one more down. Um, so not seeing a lot of trades today, but I feel like a good opportunity, like I said, to explain some of the stuff. So here, look at this. Like these are thinning out. You just had over a thousand contracts trade. These guys were holding strong. 400K just dropped in there. They pushed it through. You know what? I want to bring up something else i mentioned it the other day i used to have them up here and then i got rid of them all right so on the top i have the one that's filtered for anything above 25 on the bottom i've added one that's filtered for anything above 150. um there was a few trades that got in before i set the filter that's why you see those small ones so only bigger block trades will be on the bottom and uh you know might be useful might not be will catch our eye possibly you know we say we see you know sell 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 like you do up here you see a few here uh might be useful although honestly i'm really watching what's happening in here now see this is an area let's see if we can actually get a trade now with all of that intel all of that information here's what we're going to do we're going to look for a situation where we have a lot of contracts on one side or the other let's say the buyers they're piling on and the sellers are starting to thin out and we want to jump in on that and hopefully catch the one tick move up that we are anticipating so let's see if we can do anything here now you can also keep in perspective what they just did you know like they popped it up and then brought it back and they can pop it up again and sometimes things happen before you might be sitting here thinking oh, i think maybe yeah they're gonna pop it up and then they pop it up before you even get in a trade that's okay hey like at least you were kind of right in your assumption don't chase it. That would be my advice. We're just going for a one tick winner. So we're not chasing anything today or ever, ideally. I think we're all guilty of that at times. That UB leaves the station. You were trying to get in and jumps ahead of you. So the other thing, actually, I will mention this for um, scalping. Like a tick, a two ticks. This is a good, even though we haven't taken a trade yet, this is kind of what you want to see. It's really just bouncing back and forth and kind of a very narrow price range. Like that's prime, you know, scalping, one tick, two tick, you know, opportunity. You know, if it was up and then way down, that's not a, you know, a time when I want to be scalping. That's when I'm looking for a bigger, longer uh, kind of push. So you might notice on the tape here, like you, it's not right now, but a few seconds ago, it was like a flurry of activity, but almost nothing down here. That just means it's smaller lots going off. And again, I don't want to hear anything like, oh, that's an iceberg order and they're just pushing through 29. No, don't, no, just stop. Because if that's even true, okay, what are you going to do with that information? Like, please tell me because, and if you have no idea what I'm talking about, about an iceberg order in kind of layman's terms, it's somebody who has like a lot of contracts to move, but they don't want to come in and just be like, you know, sell, you know, 3,000 contracts and know full well they'll just ram this down. What they want to do is maybe sell 100 or 200. And then once those get filled, wait for more buyers to fill in and then sell another 100 or 200. They're basically trying to get the best price without like kind of shocking the market with throwing everything out there. It's all an iceberg is, you know, you picture an iceberg, you know, the tips above the water and 90, whatever, 5% of it is below the water. That's like it, you know, they're just kind of slowly feeding the market. That's it. But again, you know, as the kids say, cool story, bro. Like, I don't like, I don't care if there's an iceberg order there. Now, people who do want to say that will be like, well, that means the price isn't going to push through because you have a reload seller. You know, if it was a seller iceberg. I mean, maybe, but, you know, you'll see it just in the price action, or not so much price action, the order flow, you know, well, and the price action, but the order flow, and you'll see it in these numbers. That's, you know, contract sell, and then bang, a new batch, like, fills it, and then they sell and bang a new batch. Okay, great. It's probably an iceberg, but that, like, throwing around the terminology doesn't help you. Finding good trades is what actually pays the bills. <laughs> Look at this. So, see, these are things that might catch your eye. Sell, 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 sell. Like, nothing but sellers here, right? But there was no big sellers. And I'm going to swear I'll stop talking about icebergs after this. This is not an iceberg. I don't care what anyone says. Icebergs aren't moving 30 lots. They're moving, like, 100-plus lots to try to clear out, like, three or four grand. You know, they're not moving 30 at a time. So you could take a few stances here. Do nothing, which is what we're doing. 
You could also say, well, they've really been playing in this few tick range and they're kind of at the bottom of it. Like, go long here. You know, maybe they just bring it right back up in the range. We get a tick, maybe two. Maybe if it's like Christmas Day. Um, very valid kind of play, I would say. I think actually in my video, in my free course, that's kind of how I explained like part of what I'm looking for. Like, they're stuck in this range. Like, play the high and the low of the range. You know, they're down at the low of the range. Let's go long and see if they can tick it up. I'll, I'll caution you as well with like a thicker order book like this just because um so say we went long here our take profit would be one tick above but there's a lot of sellers here and you're at the back of the list so they pretty much have to fill all these orders and or those like some of these people will probably disappear so you get moved up in the queue position so it doesn't mean you're automatically going to get filled so even if we got filled here for let's say we went long at 295 we have our take profit at you know 300 even if it ticks up here it doesn't mean you're going to get filled so just keep that in mind too it's not like an instant money magic maker um, they really have to you have to not only like work on getting filled you have to think they're gonna like really eat into the next price level above you assuming you're just looking for a one tick winner and that's why we're looking at one tick today not two ticks like i don't even want to worry about trying to push through two price levels when it's this like you know stuck in like a very tight range um another option is instead of hitting a market order like say right now like to go long you'd have to take 295 if you just want it in right now if you're like, well, they seem to be bouncing between these ranges. I don't necessarily want in on this action, but if they come down another tick, you know, I'm pretty comfortable they'll bring it back up. You could just put in a limit order. Put in a limit order here at 285. If they touch it, you get filled. You might get your wishes and it might pop back up. That might be something where I'd be maybe looking for a two tick winner. It's uh, like it's a different kind of trade, I guess. I mean, it's still playing this tight range, but instead of just trying to grab the one quick tick, you're trying to like really p exploit those kind of uh, highs and lows of the range we're stuck in. So right now we're kind of in the middle. So while, through all that talking, that would have actually been a good opportunity because I think it was down here when I was thinking about going long and now it's up here. Don't want to chase because again, uh, I mean, sure, it might go up another tick or two, but we're kind of dead in the middle right now. So if anything, let's, so let's do a few things here. Let's put, just for sake of Let's put, it's 10 lot, I know I have this kind of consolidated, but there we go. Um, let's put this on now, just so we can maybe get to the front of the queue. Because, speaking of the queue, because you can see right now, we're in 1700th position. We're behind almost all of these. So, for us to get filled right now, not only would that price have to come down and trade here, it'd have to almost wipe out the entire level. And we don't necessarily want the entire level wiped out when we're looking to go long, because if they wipe out the level, that means they're pushing it down. If we can get to the front of this thing though, so say some of these people pull their orders, then put them back on, well now they're behind us. It's like, literally like a queue at the grocery store. You leave the line, you come back, you're at the back of the line. If we can like find our way towards the front, say they just tap it down here. Maybe we get filled and then we get the quick pop up here and boom, instant $150 millionaires. Now, you're going to have to wait for this, obviously. It's not trading right here. Uh, but for now, I want to put that on if we change our minds. I mean, it seems like right now they are doing a bit of a push-up, so it's a long. So let's just cancel this. That plan's out the window. Another little learning lesson. Always good to just you know be on top of it and you know react. Don't uh, Just because that was our plan doesn't mean it has to be. Now it's getting interesting because now they're starting to push this high. So let's take a gander. We haven't looked for a while over at our friends, the Ultra Bond, the 30 years. These guys are getting pretty rowdy over here in the tens. They're really popping it up. Okay, I'm going to put on a 10 there. See if we can do what I was saying we would do down there. If we can get a fill and then maybe we catch that pop. The only problem is I have it set to a one take winner and it, here's a situation where I'd be looking for more like a two or three. Um, okay. I'm going to try. Oh, we got filled right when I was going to cancel it. We got filled. Okay. Well, I can move this. There we go. What I was trying to do at the exact instant when we got filled, I was going to cancel it and put a new one on with a two tick winner, but I was able to kind of do it manually. So. Perfect. So let's see. So now we're in 
2900th position, so we're basically at the back of this queue. Um, seeing a lot of buyers. Okay, now that we're in a position, let's talk this. Seeing a lot of buyers, seeing some sellers, though. They seem to be holding it. What I do like is it's at the top. Um, I mean, we're seeing the ultra bond, and there we go. We got taken out. So you tend, that's why I like people ask me what, like, do you play those catch ups and the break highs the most? Yes, because that's where you really like. We watched a trade in here for however long, a half hour or something. Now, all of a sudden, as soon as it starts pushing the high, boom, like buyers are interested. Like, let's pound this. So, with that in mind, I'm going to take this two tick thing off the two tick take profit, or well, it was one tick, and then I changed it to two. Suck. I'm doing that off the screen in case you're wondering. You're not missing anything. Um, let's see if we can grab any other trades. So we got some ultra bond up here at the high, the 30s, the 10s. Now, normally I'm looking at the 10s for a direction on the ultra bond. I'm just looking at the ultra bond. I'm not necessarily like using it for an idea on a trade on the 10 years. I just want to make sure everything's uh, everything's going uh, which way I would like for it to go. So you have something interesting here. Um, tens are down, like off of where we just popped up to that high, like four ticks down. Ultrabond's still up here at the high. So um, I wouldn't, yeah, I would kind of expect uh, Ultrabond to follow suit here and start backing off the high. And I'm kind of ignoring the 30. I don't like, I really don't use the 30. I don't trade the 30. There's a good chance at some point I'll just ditch the 30. Like, if anything, it's a little bit of confirmation on what I'm thinking, I guess, at the time. But, so to recap, in case you're wondering, I have a mental chart. We traded in here for a long time. Then, boom, it popped right up. Bop, bop, bop. We made 100 Actually, we made three over $300 and back off some commissions for that because we took the two ticks on 10 lots. And now it's popped down. Or it's worked its way back down. I wouldn't say pop down. Pop is like wham, you know, like they just hammer it down. So there's your mental chart. Just straight, then whoop, and then down. Somebody the other day commented on, uh, they are like a few people saying how they like to have a chart up along with the treasury depths of markets. Broke my heart. Broke my heart. Saying how, uh, how would they know what had happened an hour ago if they didn't have that chart up. I just, I, speechless. Don't care. Don't care. I don't care. I don't care if the market was closed an hour ago. I don't care if, uh, you know, they were down here and rammed it straight up here. Doesn't matter. Cause we've been watching this. This is what matters, baby. Right here. What we're trading right now. I don't care if this, like, this, I'm assuming this came beforehand, obviously did. I mean, it's 11.18 now, so this is since the market opened, which was literally three, oh, like three hours ago at 11.20. If this was a bunch of chop, if it, like, ran up, ran down, ran up, I don't care. We're in the moment. We're living in the moment. No rear view mirrors. No charts, no micros. You don't like it. Hey, man. Plenty of, uh, plenty of people out there that do, you guys can gang up on me. I'm not hearing it though. Man of my ways, it works. What you really almost have to do is read the situation, get a sense, kind of come up with a hypothesis. Like, all right, I still think the sellers are going to bang this down. But on top of that, come up with like, okay, what am I going to do about it? Am I actually going to try to grab a short here? Probably should have. I mean... And don't play armchair quarterback. Like, it's easy to look and go, ah, I should have went short there. Ah, I knew I should have went. Like, yeah, I should have. I didn't. It doesn't matter. Now we are where we're at. So you could play that all day long, the guessing game. The guessing game doesn't make money. You have to actually execute. So a lot of tough love from the CFT lately, but it's uh, just how it is. All right. So now let's, let's do the same thing. Let's see here. Right now, don't love it. I see sellers pulling, I see buyers piling on, but this is pretty thin. You don't have a ton of buyers here to protect this. That's what I mean. If the buyers, um, or sorry, I'm, I might've said that wrong, but you don't have a lot of sellers here to protect this. So if buyers decide to get rowdy, boom, they pop this up, all of a sudden you're up a tick or two. I'm looking for thick depth over here. If we're gonna go short, I wanna see them just piling it on. They're just gonna ram them down. 
know a lot of uh, rowdy words here. But nonetheless, and you want to see these guys give up and go, okay, shoot, you know, this is like not a time to, to be a buyer because I think they're going to push it down. Like you have these guys saying, yes, we're going to push it down. These guys saying, oh crap, they're going to push it down. Let's get out of the way. I don't want to be a buyer here when they're going to not knock it down a tick or two. Um, and then that's what happens. It's exactly what just happened. The sellers came in, these guys relented and wham, now it's down. It wasn't even a violent, they just kind of walked right through them. So we're in the middle of that range just to reiterate. So for scalping a tick or two, not the best position to be in. Um, you know, earlier before we ended up taking that little break high two tick, you know, I was talking about, you know, it really has been bouncing around this range. You could, if you're patient, if, if the game you want to play is, you could seriously just put a limit order here, say, okay, if they come down here, I like my chances that if, if I get filled down here, they're not taking it any lower and they're going to bring it right back up. Very true, you know, possibility. Um, and probably one that's in your favor based on, you know, what we've been seeing. But you have to be patient for them to march it down here and you also have to kind of read it. If they just plow through three levels... They might not stop here. You might get filled and they keep on going. Kind of like they did when they marched it up. Like they ran it up pretty quick. Now, granted, we're right back here. I would not advise, you know, if you were for some reason short and they ran it up and you're like, ah, it'll come back. And then it comes back and you say, okay, good. I was right. Yeah, you were right. But you also like rode through like eight ticks of being, of being against you. Like no excuse to be holding an eight tick loser, hoping that it comes back, you know, your way. So I said it last time, row, row, you're right in, or you're right, or you're right out. So if you're not right, say we get filled here and it marches down, out, like done. Let's just try to get out of this. That is kind of the benefit of this. I mean, I know this hasn't been the most exciting depth of market to watch, but you can see there's a lot of play between prices. If you get in a position and it kind of hovers, it doesn't do what you wanted it to do, get out. And like, you can probably scratch it, eat a few bucks in commissions and it's not the end of the world. Now we really haven't moved up in Q position like at all, basically. Um, so people aren't pulling their orders and I mean, we're several ticks away, so I'm not surprised. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. I have it set to be a one tick take profit. So if it hits here, moves up a tick, gets filled, we get a one more tick. I would be very tempted to make it a two tick winner, you know, anticipating that it might well move right back into its, you know, middle range here. Okay, guys, it is many minutes later, only a few, but um, you can see here, I, I cut out all the dead space, but I mean, it's seriously just been trading up in here. I don't uh, think our dreams are going to come true, not in the not in the next few minutes. I mean, this we still, we're at the back of the queue. Nobody's pulling orders, and it doesn't matter because it's not even trading down there. So I think I'm going to call it quits on this one. Hopefully you found some of this stuff useful. Um, I know on the trading front, it's not very exciting, but I feel like on the learning front uh there's actually a lot more in these than some of my like other videos from the past where i'm just like hey here's a trade here's a trade here's a trade um if anything now is a good uh maybe we get another run up there but i think i will call it quits don't forget about the apex sale the jigsaw sale if you like what you saw in jigsaw again don't buy it just for the hell of it it is expensive i know this they don't have a free trial um if you sign up with TickTick, -Tick, I don't talk about TickTick -Tick often, but TickTick -Tick Trader, I'll put a link down below as well. They have 45% off this month. I mean, they've had it for a while, honestly. Um, but you get a free Jigsaw license. How they were able to work that deal, I don't know. CFT paid full price, you know, like two years ago for Jigsaw. So, kind of jealous. Um, you can get a free license of Jigsaw now. It will only work while you're with TickTick, -Tick, and I believe it only works during the evaluation. Like, it won't work once you get fun. Like, you could pay for it and buy it, obviously, but, like, the free version won't work until... Uh, will only work during the evaluation. I haven't 100% confirmed that it would work with other companies. Like, say you sign up for TickTick, -Tick, you get your free Jigsaw, and then you go sign up for Apex and you try to use uh, Jigsaw with Apex. I think it would work, but don't, 100% don't quote me on that. Don't run to them and say, hey, CFT said this would work. Like, no, I don't know. Um, and since I own Jigsaw, I can't even, like, test it. I don't want to buy it and, like, change my license key and all this stuff. Um, 
but anyways, just so, yeah, I mean, if you go with Tick Tick Trader, um, I have not gone through their valuation, but I know a lot of people have signed up with them, and I do know actually some funded traders who've been paid out and all that. That's always important, right? Um, so, and I think I mentioned in the last video too, they were, yeah, they're like doing like live trading, like seminar things, like they're legit, you know, so um, I feel confident in them. So that's one way to go. Um, they also offer a free book map license. I think I said somewhere you can get both for free. You can't. You can get one or the other, and then you can pay a fee and get the second one. Bookmap's another software. It's like a heat map, icebergs, blah, blah, blah. It looks fine. I've never used it. Um, um, I'm sure it's lovely. All right, guys. You've heard me talk enough today. Happy post-Labor Day weekend. The two days on Apex, the three days on Jigsaw were when they run out of coupons, if that actually happens. And, uh, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, hope you laughed, maybe cried, that's okay, don't worry, I'll be back again. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you in the next video.